This is definitely a great way to kick off their bundle fest. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. Fanatical is trying to put me in the ground. <laughs> they basically came out with bundle bundle fest. They're, they're like, hey, there's going to be a new bundle every day. And I'm like, uh, oh, great. So I'm going to try and keep up with that. The first bundle in their bundle fest is actually quite a tasty one, though. It is the Kingslayer bundle 2, which I really, really like the look of with one exception. And maybe you can guess what that exception is as we take a look at the games. For $5, you get Grid, Expeditions Viking, Guilty Gear, Surd Revelator, Party Hard 2, Duke Nukem Forever, and then you get a bunch of DLC. We've got the Party Hard 2 Alien Butt Form DLC, Hail to the Icons Parody Pack DLC for Duke Nukem Forever, and Duke Nukem Forever The Doctor Who Cloned Me. And that is all of the DLC currently for those two games, I do believe, which is a really good deal. So we're going to jump in, take a look at each of these games, individually and uh, I can give you my thoughts on them. Guilty Gear Surd Revelator. There are plenty of fighting games out there that will twist your shit up if you go online. Well, Guilty Gear is the one fighting game franchise that will work your ass over even in the single player campaign. And for that, I gotta admit I love it wholeheartedly. <laughs> the steampunk anime art style is just absolutely primo. Mwah. While the graphics themselves aren't that much to get worked up over, the animations on those graphics will absolutely blow you away. There are so many characters, and all of those characters feel extremely unique within their fighting style. There's no excuse for not knowing the mechanics in Guilty Gear, even though there are a lot of them to keep track of. The tutorials and ability to review replays and check out your statistics, it's all just wonderful. In addition, there are tons of unlockables. You can get digital figures to set up your own little diorama scenes, if that's what you're into. The one bad thing that I have to say about Guilty Gear is that not enough people play it. Online matches can be difficult to find, and the net code can be a little bit wonky when you do find a match, but overall, Guilty Gear has always been a franchise worth exploring, and this entry is no exception. Expeditions Viking. RPG Viking game. Do I really have to say more? I mean, yeah, I guess I do. The atmosphere and the story feel extremely plausible. I love it. I was never pulled out of my immersion, even once. You can easily consider this game on par with the greats like Path of Exile or Divinity. It starts off a bit slow, in a tiny longhouse and a defenseless little village, but this really makes you feel the progression. You truly feel your own evolution from piddly farm villager into terrifying Viking. Pair that amazing story and progression with some tactical turn-based combat, well-done management systems for everything from resources to your party to your village, a crafting system that puts most others to shame, a morality system that makes some semblance of sense, and of course, a scaling difficulty so that you can adjust the gameplay to your specific tastes. Smash all that together, and you've got a fucking masterpiece on your hands. This is a game that released and, for some strange reason, went criminally unrecognized. I don't understand how that's even possible. It makes me think of how many other fantastic games are out there just waiting to be discovered. Gosh. If you're a fan of RPGs in any way, then you definitely need to give Expeditions Viking a spin. Grid. Speaking of spin, let's talk tires. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, how's that for a segue? <laughs> Grid is, uh, duh, a racing game, if you couldn't tell. Do you want to go fast? I want to go fast! It feels a lot more arcadey than some of the more purest racing simulators out there, but for me, that's absolutely a good thing. On the scale between arcade racer and simulation, Grid falls basically right in the middle. I have covered Grid before in the bundle banter video, and during that coverage, I mentioned that because this is a Codemasters game, it is quite prone to crashing. Well, good news! It still is. <laughs> the AI is lacking, and so is the number of cars, and so is the number of tracks. But if you're just looking to escape for a little while and tool around a track in a fast car, Grid has you covered. It definitely isn't the greatest racing game ever made, but it was able to hold my attention for longer than games that lean much harder into the realism. 
I like the idea of the ally slash nemesis system that made me sing the praises of Shadow of Mordor from every rooftop that I could find, but it just doesn't feel as fleshed out here. I'm also sad that they did away with the stat tracking from previous entries. How many miles have I driven? Duh, I don't know. It was a small thing, but you guys know how much I love numbers and watching the numbers get bigger. Ugh, why'd they have to do that? There are some good ideas here that need a bit more polish, but for the price, I mean, especially in this bundle, for a dollar? Come on. It's a fun game to tool around with for a little while. Party Hard 2! The Party Hard games draw such extreme parallels to Hotline Miami that from my first time seeing the trailer, I simply couldn't help but fall in love with it right away. I beat the brakes off the first iteration. The second iteration keeps the same ideas but works the graphics up a bit more. You'll stealth through a party and attempt to blend in only to kill partygoers when nobody else is watching. Hide the bodies, avoid the cops. It has a very different vibe but the pulsing music and the bright pixel art and all the violence of course just screams Hotline Miami to me. I'd much prefer a game where you can go in dumb and loud of course but having to avoid being sighted when doing your dirty work means that you really need to go in with a more methodical mindset. Contrary to popular belief, I do actually enjoy thinking. Sometimes. <laughs> there are plenty of improvements here over the original, with large maps and secondary objectives like kill everybody in a striped shirt, which gives it sort of a puzzle feel that I think is nice to mix things up. You can also hold multiple items. The game doesn't tell you any of that. It could use a small tutorial pretty desperately. As a final point, I'd like to mention the boss fights. Party Hard 1 didn't have boss fights. Party Hard 2 does. And they're not really a good idea in a game like this, in my opinion. Everything in the game, yourself included, is a one-hit kill. But for some reason, this fucking meat sack pops up out of nowhere, and they can take a dozen hits before going down. It just feels off. And it ends up being more frustrating than fun, for the most part. Party Hard 2 Alien Butt Form. Three new characters, five new maps, some added weapons and items, a few new abilities thrown into the mix. Yeah, I'd say that this is a decent DLC with some actual meat on it. You get to play as Pepe the Frog, so that's always a plus. There's also a dog that kills people and like this edgy biker chick. It's really just more of the same stuff that I enjoyed so very much from Party Hard 2, and that's a definite sell in my case. I think I should probably mention that you don't get to play as any character you want on whatever map you want, and I think that's an extremely missed opportunity. The first two maps in this pack are for Edgy Vagina Lady, third map is for Dog, four and five are reserved for Pepe, there's also a boss fight on number five. Would I pay full price for this DLC knowing what's included? Mm, probably not. But thrown into this bundle? I'm actually pretty excited for it. Duke Nukem Forever! Hail to the King, baby! or more accurately, pay your respects to the former king who is totally and completely dead. Duke Nukem has always been a tongue-in-cheek parody game of your stereotypical action hero. With fast gunplay and plenty of exploration to enjoy, Duke Nukem Forever attempted to parody modern military shooters with that same sarcastic style, but in the process, it ended up becoming the thing that it hated the most. It's not the worst game I've ever played, but it is a far cry from the glory days that Duke Nukem once knew. Exploration is dead. Combat is stale at best. It also features long walking simulator segments. Because, you know, that's what FPS games in the late 2000s, early 2010s were doing. I just don't understand why they would do this to such a beloved franchise. One that so many gamers, myself included, had been waiting for a new iteration of for so long. They could have never met all that expectation, but to fall so far from it? Gah, it's just frustrating. Oh well, at least we'll always have Duke Nukem 3D, right? Duke Nukem Forever, the Doctor Who Clones Me DLC. This DLC is gonna fix everything, right? Well, kind of. It does feel a lot more focused, and it has the razor wit that made Duke Nukem, well, Duke Nukem. But it still takes place inside Duke Nukem Forever. We aren't getting away from that snooze fest of a weapon system. They did try though. There is a platforming section, but I don't think that very much development time at all was given to the jumping in Duke Nukem Forever. Is it worth full price? 
Ah, not at all. But this DLC alone is what saves Duke Nukem Forever from being a complete waste of a bundle slot. It's not very often that a piece of three hour DLC is better than the actual full length game that it's the DLC for, but here we have an example of exactly that. Gearbox absolutely knew they fucked up. They tried to make it up to the fans with a DLC that probably should have been free if they really wanted to save themselves. Duke Nukem Forever, hail to the Icons parody pack. Three multiplayer game modes, four new multiplayer maps. Really nothing much to say about this one apart from pointing out the obvious. Hey everyone, the multiplayer in this game was fucking dead on arrival. Add to that, hey everyone, the weapons in this game suck ass and aren't very fun to play with at all. They tried to parody Team Fortress 2's obsession with hats, but the irony is, Team Fortress 2 is still alive and kicking, while Duke Nukem was buried a long time ago. This will probably be the last time that we ever see a Duke Nukem game. Part of me is sad about that, but the other half, the half that remembers playing Duke Nukem forever, that part says, good fucking riddance. Hail to the corpse, baby. So what do I think of this bundle? Aside from going out on a down note with Duke Nukem Forever, I think this bundle is fucking amazing. Basically five games with all of the DLC included for two of them, and the mix of games is just mwah, Oh, I, there's something for everybody in here. You got Grid for the racing, Expeditions of Viking for the RPG lovers, Party Hard 2 gets your stealth in there, Guilty Gear for the fighting, Duke Nukem Forever technically is for the shooters, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to be swayed by Duke Nukem Forever, but I definitely like the mix that they have going on here. It's not exactly Fanatical's strongest bundle ever, but it is up there. I'd say top five. Out of the ones I've covered, I think this might be the strongest one yet. This is definitely a great way to kick off their bundle fest. So the next bundle up is Bento Box 3 which probably has a lot of japanese -y sort of games, so I don't know, maybe I'll like it, maybe I'll find something in there. And this probably isn't going to be interesting to very many people at all, but I am trying to get a Fanatical affiliate link set up so I can get 5% commission on sales, so if you buy a $5 bundle, I'll get a nice shiny quarter out of it, which is, you know, better than nothing, which is basically what I'm doing it for now, but no salt. I ain't in it for the money. I'm in it because I love video games and I love video game bundles. And I know a lot of other people are enjoying the content as well, so I gotta continue to make it. Anyways, with all of that said, thank you so much, as always, for listening along with me, friends. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We've got giveaways going on in the Discord. I'm shitposting on Twitter, and of course, my patrons are doing the big things and making all this stuff happen for me. So I'd like to thank each of them individually, Radimus Sisko, Damon Darkstar, Nico the Legend, and Lady Nix. If you'd like to be a patron, head on over, check out the tiers, we got some good stuff in there. But anyways friends, I think that about does it for me. I will see you in the Bento Box Bundle number three, and uh, I, guess, I guess we'll just have to see how it goes. <laughs> Once again, this has been Bundle Banter, I've been Brandon Dayton. Your humble narrator, I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.